Hey, I'm Geeky Pastimes, and in today's video, I want to show you the best controller settings for Halo Infinite. In the video, I'm going to explain what every setting does so you can customize them yourself, and I'm also going to show you the settings that I use and explain why I use each of those. For this video, I'm using an Xbox Elite controller, but all of these settings should be generic to everything. If you find this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe, turn your notifications on for future videos, and if you have any other tips about how to set up your controllers or things you disagree with or things that don't work for a specific controller, leave them in the comments below so people can get them so you can help other people out with that. So we'll head into the options menu. Like I said, I'll show you the way I've got it set up, but I'll also explain everything so you can change it yourself. So you just go into settings then in controller and you'll see the first setting that I've done differently is the button layout. And this is probably one of the biggest changes that people will find bizarre, especially if you've come from Call of Duty and Battlefield and you haven't been playing Halo for years and years and years. So Bumper Jumper does sound very, very strange. I get it like the first time I heard someone talk about this way back when it sounded really bizarre to me. I think we made fun of him being like, that's a weird thing to say, but it does genuinely make sense for Halo. So the problem with the default setting, if I just go back up to default, is that you have the aiming on the right stick, like in most games, and then jump on A. Now this means that you can't aim and jump at the same time, unless you're using paddles or something like that for your jump button. And that's a big problem, because in Halo you want to be jumping, you want to be messing up other people's aim by jumping around, you want to be jumping across the terrain, and you want to be able to aim while you do that. You actually have a kind of floaty jump in Halo, you'll spend a lot of time in the air, so it makes sense to be able to aim while you're in the air. Now, Bumper Jumper fixes that problem, but it also changes a lot of other things, so it takes a lot of getting used to. And you want to change the setting as early as possible, so then you can get your sort of muscle memory and everything used to it. Otherwise, it feels very, very weird when you transition. So, this moves jumping to LB. So that is a really easy button to use. You can use that while you're doing anything else. It's not getting in the way of anything else. So you can just put that up on LB. Now, because they didn't want to put grenades over on A, which is where jump originally was, they've actually moved loads of other buttons around. And it makes sense to me, but if there's one of these that you don't like, you can swap it very easily later on. So it changes left trigger to throw grenade. This is what Halo always used to have. And it's because aiming down sides isn't as important in Halo as it is in other games. There's no penalty for hip firing in Halo, and that's very different from something like Call of Duty. Instead, really aiming down sights, or zoom as it's called in this game, literally just does that. It zooms and that's it. So it doesn't improve your accuracy or anything like that. It just helps you to see a little bit better. I tend not to use it unless I'm using the stalker rifle or the sniper rifle or sometimes the battle rifle. Most of the time I'll just hip fire because it's just as accurate and then you've got a much wider field of view while you're shooting. So throw grenade goes on left trigger and then the zoom button actually goes on to the right stick. And I'll talk about it later, but you won't be holding that down. You'll just be toggling that. So you'll just click it into zoom and that works absolutely fine. Then lots of other things have changed. A has become sprint, which feels slightly strange because you might expect that to be on the left stick, but the left stick is now crouch. And we'll talk about that a bit later as well. Then reload has gone over to B, which is also your interact button or the vent button for any plasma weapons. And then X is your button to use equipment. Everything else is pretty much the same. I think RB will be melee, which is very, very useful because obviously that could be on the right stick. But RB, melee is super important in this, so you kind of want something you can definitely reliably hit, so it makes sense to be on there. And then right triggers obviously still fire. Now, this might seem super strange, and you can change some of these buttons around if you want, but I strongly suggest you have a go at this. It's the way a lot of people play Halo because it really makes sense for the gameplay of Halo. The next setting is the thumbstick layout. This is a super strange one. I would definitely leave it at default. I don't know why anyone ever changes it. If you want to set it to legacy, what that does is it makes it so you can actually rotate using the left stick and then you strafe using the right stick. I find that utterly bizarre. It's a little bit more like how early first person shooters on console like GoldenEye worked, but I find it really, really strange to use. I couldn't even play GoldenEye like that. I use, I don't rotate using left stick in that even. I use the C buttons. So I would just stick this on default. It's very, very strange using it on Legacy. Vibration obviously is just whether you want your controller to vibrate. I know some people turn it off because it might make you a bit more accurate. The vibrations might throw you off, but I personally leave it on because I think it's better. It's a bit more immersive. Then you've got all your usual invert look and invert flight. It's worth remembering that the vehicles in Halo don't really control like planes. So maybe inverting flight isn't as useful as you might think it is. I find it easier to aim 
the normal way so just to make it the same as however you normally have your aiming but that's entirely up to you now we get settings that might be a bit counterintuitive first of all hold to crouch i would personally turn on this means remember now crouch is on your left stick if you're using bumper jumper if say you're sprinting and then you want to slide you just tap it and then you will slide and then get back up and then carry on running if you've turned this off then you'll go into a crouch and you'll have to tap it again to get back up if you're the sort of person that crouches a lot in halo and there's very legitimate reasons to do that it hides you from the radar you might want to have it so this is on toggle instead but personally as someone that moves around quite quickly i much prefer to have this on hold to crouch instead hold to zoom on the other hand i would make sure is turned off and this is because like i said you'll be mostly hip firing and when you do zoom in you might be using something like the sniper rifle or the stalk rifle that both have two levels of zoom and with this turned off you can just click the button to zoom in once click it again to zoom in a bit further and then click it again to come out of it I find that much, much easier rather than trying to hold it down to zoom in. So I'd have that turned off. Similarly, I'd turn off hold to sprint. Because sprint is now on your A button, it's a lot e more difficult to hold it down. So you really want to just be able to tap A to go into a sprint and then keep on going with that rather than having to hold it down. Movement assisted steering, I would definitely have off. It's super strange. Some of you might know that the halo steering is very, very different from other games. In Halo, your vehicle just kind of follows where the camera is pointing. You're not using the left stick to steer. It's not like you're controlling the steering wheel. Instead, you're controlling the camera and the vehicle kind of works it out to drive the way you're pointing. You can change it so left stick will actually help you to steer the vehicle. I find that as someone that's played Halo for a long time, I find that very weird. You could try it if you want, if you're having trouble with the steering, but I think it's probably better just to get used to the Halo way of steering. Maintain sprint I think is a really important one to have on. This means say if you're sprinting and then you jump and then you want to carry on sprinting, it will just do that without you having to press any extra buttons. If not, when you jump, it will cancel the sprint and you'll have to start it again. A lot of the time in Halo, you're sprinting when you're trying to get back into fights, so you'll be jumping over terrain and over gaps and things like that. I personally think it's a lot better to keep maintain sprint on. Auto clamber, another thing that I think is good to have on, is when you get near a ledge, you will automatically grab it and pull yourself up. It's not too sticky. I haven't had a single time so far where it's accidentally made me clamp on something that I didn't mean to. So I think this is a useful thing to have on. Step jump is a very strange one where if you're very close to a low ledge, rather than doing your full jump onto it, you'll just do a small jump just to climb up onto it. I prefer having this off because it makes it a little bit inconsistent when you're jumping, especially in the sort of 4v4 maps and tighter areas of the big team battle maps. It can be really distracting if sometimes you jump and you don't jump very high and sometimes you jump the full height. So I prefer to have this off to make it a bit more consistent. Now the next set of options are the sensitivity and acceleration options and these are a little bit strange. They're giving you a bit more control than you get in a lot of games so it's worth going through them. So look acceleration is the speed at which you start to turn, the acceleration of it. So that means when you first move your control stick you will actually look, your look movement will change a tiny bit then as you've held that direction for longer it will speed up. And this is because sometimes you want to make very small changes when you're aiming at someone, very precise changes, and sometimes you want to be able to do things like spin around. And this lets you do both of those things. Otherwise, if you just had high sensitivity and you had no look acceleration, then as soon as you tap the stick, you would just spin around and it'd be very hard to do very small movements. And if you had very low sensitivity, it'd be very hard to ever spin around. So acceleration tries to give you the best of both worlds. It is a very strange thing. It's a little bit of an acquired taste. This setting, if you have it set very low, so if you have that set all the way down to one, for example, then it will take you a very long time to start turning. It will make it a little bit easier to aim precisely, but it'll be very hard to start turning. And in Halo, people are always jumping around, jumping over you. That's not good at all. If you have this set very, very high, it'll be very hard to aim precisely because you'll immediately be sort of twitching away from them. The default is two. I personally would have this set to three. That's what I leave it on. That seems to work very well for me. Look sensitivity is exactly what you would expect it to be. I would personally move it up a little bit because the Halo default controls are a little bit sluggish, a little bit slow. If you're used to games like Call of Duty, you'll definitely want this to be a little bit higher. I wouldn't turn it up loads, but generally the rule of thumb sensitivity is turn it up a little bit, play with it, see how you like it, then go back into options, turn it up a bit more and keep on going until it's the highest one that you can reasonably deal with. You want to be able to aim as fast as possible, but you also don't want your aim to be going all over the place. Zoom sensitivity, you can change 
the sensitivity for each zoom level for if say you're zooming in with the pistol or the battle rifle or the assault rifle or the sniper rifles personally i don't mess with these because a lot of what you're trying to do with your controller settings is about muscle memory it's all about trying to learn the way that the game reacts to your movements and so you don't really want to have to have like learn different movements for different weapons different zoom levels and things like that so i personally would keep all of that the same now we get on to dead zones now dead zones are very very unusual there's something that i think a lot of people haven't thought about because some games don't give you any control over it halo infinite gives you loads of control over it but you have to know what you're doing so the dead zone basically the idea behind it is all controllers have some element of stick drift there's always going to be a tiny amount of stick drift and a dead zone counteracts that by requiring you to move the stick a certain sort of angle before it will start registering an input this means if the controller has a bit of stick drift and thinks the stick's moving when it's not and it's only a tiny amount then as long as it's within that dead zone it won't affect your game at all the problem with this is it also stops the game from feeling very responsive it makes it feel like you have to move and then there'll be a little bit of a delay before you start actually moving in game so what you want to do is to set this as low as possible without experiencing stick drift so i would just go into a weapon drill something like that set the center dead zone down as low as you can three or four is probably a reasonable amount but you can go all the way down to zero if you want to and then put your controller down see if it's moving wiggle the control sticks around so the move from stick is the left one the look from sticks the right one wiggle it about a little bit and see if the game is moving by itself if your character starts walking when you're not pressing anything or after you've hit a direction and you've stopped hitting that direction they carry on walking that's stick drift on the move one and if your camera starts turning or starts tilting in some way that's the look one and if that happens turn up your dead zone just a tiny bit and then see if the same thing happens again and keep going until you get zero stick drift once you get zero stick drift stop that's the setting for you every controller is going to be different older controllers tend to have a bit more stick drift but some different just controller manufacturers have them and even just within the manufacturing process two controllers that are exactly the same might have different amounts of stick drift so try to keep this as low as you can for some reason the default is insanely high i would personally keep it down to try and keep it down to like four but if you have stick drift keep turning it up a little bit until we get rid of it the max input threshold is basically how far the analog stick has to be towards one side or the other before it's registered as the maximum input which means you'll be turning or moving at the maximum speed if you want this to feel really responsive you can turn this down which will mean you don't have to move the sticks very far to have those kind of extreme movements but if you want a lot of sort of fine tuning of movement or looking depending on which stick you're talking about you can turn this up a little bit which means that you actually want to have the control stick move further in order to register the maximum one it's entirely up to you i personally leave it on default i think that's fine the problem with turning it down which would make it more responsive and make it a little bit quicker is that it makes it much harder to do those very fine adjustments when you're aiming the axial dead zone is very similar to the center dead zone but instead of just measuring how far away it is from the middle it measures how far away it is from zero on the x-axis or zero on the y-axis so you can end up having something where say your controller always drifts up or always drifts left or something like that you can set this even lower than the center dead zone in my experience at least on my controller but again you want to set it as low as you can and then start turning it up by increments until you've got none of that stick drift um so you've got all of the same settings for the other thumbstick as well make sure you've set these up perfectly you really want to make sure you get these right now the rest of these settings are all of the different button mappings and it's really nice that you can change all of the button mappings if you don't like some of the things in bumper jumper like say you want reload to be on x because you're used to that from call of duty you can swap that with b and it's not a problem at all you can go through all of these and choose what you want to put in one really interesting thing that i think some people haven't noticed about halo infinite is that there's actually some buttons that start off unmapped so if you want to map some things like the ability to drop weapon you can do that you can add a button that will let you drop a weapon say for a teammate or something like that it's not necessarily that useful also there's a lot of buttons in here that aren't particularly useful for multiplayer but they're useful in campaign i'm assuming because there's things like your equipment slots or there's some later which are to do with the map all of that stuff is just for campaign 
There's also a bunch of theater options, so things like skip forward or toggling the outlines. Um, that's something that isn't bound by default, but you can add it if you want, or the ability to just move the camera up and down or switch which or toggle whether the player switcher is showing. So all of those things can be added. So hopefully this settings guide helped you. Like I said, let me know in the comments if you've got some other advice for people or something you disagree with or something that doesn't work for your particular controller because that will help other people. With all of these guides, it's really helpful having comments from people who have said, oh, this didn't work for me, but this did because then you might find someone else having exactly the same problem. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.